your buddy peace and harmony with you here today zooming in on the topic of a very painful one a very difficult one but how to divorce or separate from a narcissist successfully now realize that each case is unique each situation is different uh, depending on the the length of the relationship the extent of the abuse whether you have kids or not you know there are so many factors that really go in to really separating from a narcissist or a psychopath successfully but number one I want to discuss really when um, divorce is involving kids and things of this nature property so that you can really make make sure that you're not taken advantage of number one when it comes to splitting you you absolutely positively need uh, representation and when it comes to putting money into attorneys, um, you do get what you pay for. And you do really want to seek representation um, for this manner, which is with, with someone who really identifies and understands the narcissist. Um, it's not a typical divorce, you know, just, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're splitting ways, we have irreconcilable differences. The, the narcissist and psychopath are adept at manipulating, taking advantage of people, and pathologically lying. This doesn't stop when the law is involved. Now, oftentimes they can be um, you know, afraid of law enforcement, but they really do fear, the narcissist does fear being exposed for, for the vulnerable and authentic person that they are. So realize that in stages of divorce, the narcissist factor is gonna kick up a couple notches. In other words, their defense mechanisms are going to be amped up. They're going to be involved in more uh, activities that fill the void, more uh, shopping, uh, more you know, trying to uh, uh, humiliate and infuriate the uh, the supply source. They're going to try to push more buttons. They're going to be pushed to the limits. Kids are going to be. Uh, oftentimes used as a pawn in the relationship, using them as bait, um, you know, trying to uh, use more pathological lying, um, a lot of emotional conflict going, especially using kids and property. Um, you know, when these things get very heated, it's very difficult to keep clear and keep perspective and know exactly how to manage uh, difficulty. So if, if it is in a narcissist relationship where there's a lot of imbalance, uh, typically there is quite a bit of imbalance in the relationship and that's really oftentimes the means for uh, splitting, uh, for divorcing. Um, you know, or there can just be you know, outright abuse, physical abuse, financial abuse, emotional abuse, which makes the relationship absolutely intolerable. Um, so each situation is unique. But realize a, a couple different things. If you are seeking to become separated from a narcissist, Realize, number one, that just because you're splitting doesn't mean that you're less than or underrepresented in the relationship. You absolutely positively have to realize that an ounce of prevention is going to be worth a pound of cure because the narcissist is going to make every attempt to make sure that you are minimized, minimized in representation and they're going to they're going to seek to bring other people in uh, to es essentially create a smear campaign of, against you. Um, they will go at no, they will stop at no ends, whether it's family members um, who they will share information with, uh, work colleagues, uh, their lawyers, their representation, etc., their children. They can fill their children with all sorts of um, erroneous information with, which they do not need. Um, you definitely want to pre prevent and prepare against this because kids are not emotionally and psychologically developed to be able to handle and be in the middle of parental conflicts. Um, they should not be try to be won over. You know, kids have to, you have to realize that they're extremely impressionable and they absolutely positively need to be protected in this situation. So number one, realize that an ounce of prevention is gonna be worth a pound of cure. And so knowing the tactics that are going to come the, uh, the button pushing, the slander, the uh, situation where kids are going to be used as bait. Realize that you are just as fair and you receive, you deserve just as equal representation. Just because someone has more money, someone has a job, uh, someone is going to be, I think what it was referred to as like a Disneyland parent, 
you know, giving them gifts, you know, feeding them the uh, lies, feeding them the illusion, you know, uh, you know, saying basically, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, the one and only for you and I'm going to just, you know, march you into the happy future and so-and-so your father or so-and-so, you know, your, uh, the spouse is no, lo you know, no good for you. You have to realize that this is going to be coming. And so, uh, uh, number two, you have to realize absolutely positively that you then present yourself in the relationship as responsible, accountable, reliable, fair, and coming from an educational perspective. In other words, a caring perspective. Because if you try to uh, counter force that narcissist force with more abuse, with more yelling, they're remaining in control. They're remaining as the manipulator. They're remaining as the exploiter. So you don't want to take that approach. You want to realize that you have your own strength, you have your own position in the relationship, and that you can never really replace a parent. Um, you know, your mother is your mother, your father is your father, and the narcissist will try to scoot in another supply as soon as possible. You know, and it might be as soon as possible, it might be six months, a year, two years, but when that person comes, make sure that you are not replaced by them. You know, if and when. So how do you how do you prepare for this? Realize that you're going to need to have your sit your kids down, really, and no matter age, what age, and explain to them on their level that you will always be there for them. You will always be a teacher to them. You will always be looking out for them and their best interests. You will always be interested in them. You will always care for them, and you always want to hear from them. And so you have to be able to get level with your children. You have to be able to have these deep, you know, conversations and say, you know, and then, you know, make it relevant to their life. In other words, you know, just like some friends aren't good for you, you know, you meet new friends. And so, you know, that's what, you know, uh, mommy and daddy are doing now because we think that this is going to be best for you also. So make sure that the kids are included and that they receive very neutral very balanced, very age appropriate information. Make sure that it's not, you know, coming from a position of like, I'm trying to win you over and buy you gifts. I mean, because really in the long run, the kids are not going to benefit from that. They're just going to create a spoiled child who is just going to be, out, you know, in control by the these goods. Um, you know, yes, they need certain objects and materials and things, but really, it needs to come with an internal locus of control. Internal locus of control is where you teach that child that they are what is important, they are what is loved, they are, are what is valuable, and giving them the abilities moving forward, the guidance and direction in moving forward, so that they can be autonomous and provide for themselves and you know surround themselves with great people is really where you're looking out for them. So you don't buy your kids' attention that's not going to work. You need to um, be responsible, meaning if you're splitting from um, you know, a narcissist, realize that the tug of war is going to ensue. Realize you're not going to cave in to that, that tug of war, so you need to come from a very neutral, indifferent perspective. Not being inflamed by certain uh, statements, comments, etc. And keeping as much out of the legal system as possible because they will drain you your money. But realize that you know when it comes to interfacing with the narcissist, you you know um, you you have lo uh, legal representation. If you can't afford a lawyer, you know go down to your local uh, courthouse and see what kind of pro bono representation is available. Pro bono meaning for free. Contact your local um, uh, uh, college for uh, you know uh, you know the universities um, where you've got the law school. Uh, uh, staff and you know where they, where they have a, a pro bono clinic for legal representation um, but you know you you definitely need to get representation and make those contacts and see what kind of mediators um, they do have available but you do want to represent yourself as much as possible because no one is going to represent you better than you so when it comes to contact with your narcissist um, definitely keep uh, very indifferent you know, um, you know, if there doesn't, you know, keep as much open communication as possible, of course. Um, but when it comes to really the personal allegations, keep things very objective and very factual, very neutral and very indifferent. 
so that you're not, you know, emailing things back and forth that are hateful, spiteful, scornful. It's not going to get you anywhere. It might seem like an emotional release, but it's not going to, you know, the, the sooner you can stop that, the better. And, you know, definitely realize you have to work to each parent's strengths in the relationship. Um, and sometimes, you know, when custody is involved, you know, you need to have a legitimate full-time job. Um, you know, you need to be able to prove a source of income. So if you don't have a source of income and you want to be able to, you know, uh, you know, be with your children and have access and, you know, things of this nature, it's going to be in the divorce decree, basically, you know, you need to secure full-time income. Um, you know, so certain things you're going to need to comply with, and this is for your child's best interest. And if you're not able to live up to that, then you're, you're not going to have certain rights and responsibilities um, in the relationship and being there moving forward. So, you know, in terms of coming at them, keep contact to a very, very bare minimum. Um, and, you know, do not use the kids as a pawn, as a bait. Absolutely, positively do not engage in that. Um, do not um, verbally give them information which they can't handle. Um, just, you know, do not do that. But always be present at, do not allow yourself to be replaced for certain things like baptisms, you know, uh, school graduations and things of this nature. Make sure you have and take direction, um, either be it religious direction, uh, you know, sports direction in their sports, their extracurricular activities, taking them to uh, very important places such as museums, uh, the zoo, um, other things of that nature which are very, you know, um, beneficial to them and as a parent should offer those opportunities to a child. Things that don't have to take a lot of money, but that will be remembered and valued by your children moving forward is number one important. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support.